Hey everyone, uh, my name is Arakan Blix, this is how my team is done. And uh, we are from Friends of We came all the way from Norway to be here to get with you guys. So first of all, uh, this is uh, Friend, the unique network. So Friend, I guess you get, is English for Amiga. Uh, it's called Ben in Norwegian, but that doesn't help. So Friend is actually the uh, uh, name of the company, Friend Software Platform. And, uh, uh, and uh, the unified platform is uh, we're actually going to show you some a piece of what we think is a piece of the future. So how about accessing your life? That means all of your digital things. Uh, anytime, anywhere, everywhere on any device. Would that be nice? No enthusiasm. Would that be nice? I think it would be nice. It sounds a bit crazy, but uh, and I think they've been trying to do this for years and years and years, but we're going to show you it's actually possible. We're actually more than halfway there. So, Computer World said in 2003 that uh, it would be, in the future, Operating systems should be built top down, not bottom up. They should be built with, starting with the user, not with the iron. Now, uh, Hope Nick called me about two years ago, one and a half year ago, and he said, I've been thinking about this for a long time, and I, I have something I want to discuss with you. Uh, we discussed, discussed back and forth actually making a specification for a new operating system. And today, we're going to spend half an hour to uh, intrigue you and then we're going to have some beers tonight and think about what we're going to tell you. And it's going to be a bit mind boggling so I'm asking for your patience and I'm also going to ask for your help. A little help from our Liga friends to get the friend project working because tomorrow we'll actually demo it and we'll do a technical deep dive. But you're going to need some time to get wrap your head around this. And you're smart enough, so I'm sure you can do this in half an hour. So, you only have time for one interface in your life, and you should be able to access that interface anytime, anywhere, or anything you want, right? And you should also be able to work comfortably offline. That's another requirement. Navigate and operate any technology, and then also be able to understand it. Now, regardless of all the changes happening out there, you need to navigate all that change with the environment you understand. At least I need that. So that's basically the whole thing we're going to show you in one slide. So if you're going to remember one slide from this presentation, remember this one. Because we take a unique position in the digital system. What we do is we abstract. So in the realm of OSs, we take all the circular OSs have you know, any kind of server OS out there today, they haven't spent a lot of time to create a nice user interface for, for Citrix, for Unix, for Linux, for QNX and all these. Well, we can, we can do something about that if you expect it. Same with the home entertainment there. Home entertainment OS, they're more like active menus, smart TVs, what they mean OS, I'm just asking. Mobile uh, phones, and with me, you know that um, uh, Android is winning that game at the moment, and uh, iOS is a good number two. Blackberry and a couple others are on the downfall. On the desktop market, there's obviously two major uh, proprietary OSs, and then Linux and various distros. By putting Friend on top of these, abstracting all of those with one unified platform, you will be able to actually navigate as a developer and even also as an end customer across all of these in one unified manner. We're actually doing this. This is not a science fiction, we're actually doing this. The benefit is also that Internet of Things are actually like embedded. We will also be able to navigate that because this is actually it's protocol level. So we can run on the sub ether. Okay. <laughs> 50 channels and nothing on. <laughs> Hold it. 
Try again. Press, press it on that. Sal. Press it on that. Pull the knuckles is on the Yeah, pull the middle. Alright. I better hold this like that. The top is a hole. So, um, Linux had a great promise. Do any of you guys remember uh, Linspire or Lindos when it came? Linux had a great promise, but uh, something uh, messed it up. And there are many factors to this, but they didn't have a commercial strategy from the from the get go. Linux is used everywhere right now, and it's because it's available on everything. It's adapted for everything, but it doesn't have a, a commercial backbone. So it's based on the GNU general public license, and in that license it says there is no guarantee. Uh, of course, no software has a total uh, waterproof guarantee, but when you have a commercial system, you can create a target platform that's much easier as a fixed point than something that's moving as fast as Linux is. Also, Linux was never developed with a graphical strategy. They left that to the desktop environment developers. So when you make a Linux application, it might appear you know, really crazy on one laptop and really perfectly well on another. Um, we think that if Linux would have had a commercial strategy from the uh, start, it could have been much larger than it is today. That's why we're developing our system with a dual license. So we're doing both what Linux did, making it open source, universally available, and at the same time we have a commercial license where you can have a fixed point to, to develop for as a commercial uh, entity. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that the market potential, if we pull this off, is much greater than Linux's 1.7, and I think Linux will have a larger potential. Okay, so what is the frame OS? What we've done is basically, we said we're going to design this from the top down. So I'm, I'm a user, I'm uh, not a not a developer, I'm not a Hello, there we go. So, uh, but obviously, today, the resources, can you hear the back? No, yes, can you hear it? So, this way, I can use without microphone, is that better? What? Not so close, not so close. That's okay, like this? Hello? Is this better? That's okay. Are there away? has spilled out over the internet, but uh, the OS is still stuck where it is. So what we're doing is we're saying by abstraction, we don't really care where the resource is. As long as we can see that resource, and as long as we can access that resource, we can use it. That's a lot like the terminal thinking. So by abstraction, we tap into all the resources wherever they are, and we link them all together. Please. <laughs> Page now. Definitely. 
not friend technology, not friendly technology. <laughs> okay, yeah. So this is uh, what we were thinking. My background is in web development. And uh, I also, I, I started when we had uh, Internet Explorer for Mac. So I was living through some kind of hell at that time. <laughs> and um, I was used to targeting a lot of buggy browsers. And um, today, this has become much, much better with, uh, with WebKit going on every device and uh, open source helping us to support every architecture out there. But uh, we still have this problem. So I thought that if we would have a, a unifying platform, we could stream everything through that as a hub and then access it at one, at one point. So, what we thought is that we would um, position the developer as a, at the highest level. The highest level is the level where everything is abstracted. So, friend provides you with an abstraction layer that uh, plugs into all the technology you know and gives it one API, one kind of super API uh, that you develop for and that delivers all the resources that have been abstracted to all your devices. That can be a mobile phone, a tablet, it can be a workstation, and it can be an API that comes out at the other end that you can plug into with C, C++, whatever system you have at the other end. So, being a business person, but having developed um, several successful companies over the years, I, I, I asked Hogna, I need this sort of uh, schematic to understand the stack. And, uh, at least as far as I can understand it, uh, what we're doing is, we're using all the other OS's as a kernel for FriendCore. And FriendCore, it's a network attached meta kernel. It's uh, it's a network processing unit. It's an Apache. It has also many other things, and it has its own libraries. Then we have a launcher, which is the uh, interface between uh, the home being either terminal or VR or uh, user interface or GUI, depending on who you are. And in that sense, applying these two. The only thing you see is the hardware and home. The rest disappears. So anything in between here becomes um, not of your interest if you're your end user. And if you're a programmer, you don't have to really care about, you can be agnostic. You just use the other OSs as a kernel, as a driver for resources. That's at least how I understand it. So basically, uh, uh, what we have here is we have the OS. So this is kind of chronological. The OS we call uh, kind of like the static uh, OS. That means that you have to input something uh, into the system and upgrade it and tamper with it to change its behavior. Um, there you have the GUI layer, the DOS layer, the kernel, and the har hardware in one package. Then we got into the age of the cloud OS. And the cloud OS uh, can be upgraded while it's uh, in the cloud by rebooting the virtual PC that it's on and giving it more RAM and whatever. That's why it's so great for servers, is because it's easily upgradable and it's easy, easy to manage depending on what resources you need. A meta OS is completely dynamic. When a lot of people saw our system, they said, you guys are building a cloud OS because it, it, it lives in the cloud. But the reason why we call it a meta OS is because every component is reconfigurable on the fly. It's a system where the entire GUI is scripted so it's scripted in the JavaScript, so you can change the GUI while it's running. And it's separated from the kernels, which start with an access node and goes over to network nodes, 
which are clones of, of the same type of server program that really creates a cluster of, of um, connected kernels. And you can uh, use a load balancer in there. You can, you can uh, uh, take all the load and put it on one friend core, which is like a server, and while you upgrade the other cores. So you can move around which core you're using, and then you can upgrade this computer while it's running. So both on the uh, client side and on the server side, you can upgrade the system while it's running. That's a meta OS. We'll describe this a little bit better uh, in the coming slides. So we call this a multiple multitasking singularity. The reason why we call it that is because, um, for example, the Mega OS, it was great at multi media because it had multitasking. And it was built that way in the kernel and in the GUI. The screens, for example, is a great uh, uh, show off for multitasking. And, you know, in many ways we're going back to single tasking these days with tablet uh, and uh, mobile OSs. Um, because it has one thing running on the screen at any given moment, virtually. What we're doing is that we're taking multiple multitasking systems and using them as one unit. So as this cluster of multitasking systems are running, it becomes some kind of a multidimensional uh, kernel system. So in a way it takes the legacy of the Amiga OS and it takes it further. So that was uh, 20 minutes of um, maybe something new, but do you understand what it is? That's the question. And um, when we explain this to people, we meet a lot of different reactions. It took me a lot of time to wrap my head around it, but um, for developers it's for some very easy and for others very hard. And we're trying to actually learn more about why people have so different reactions. And I think it has a lot to do with their background, where they're coming from, their uh, um, opinion of what is good, what is not good, etc. So we're going to do a little exercise here. And I need a little help from the Amiga friends. We both need The question is basically, what do you think it is? Because we're trying to figure out um, the product strategy of this thing. I think when it's up and running in the full-fledged form, it's easier. But the, the, the trouble we're having at the moment is to define the product strategy and how we're actually going to deploy it. So, and do you want me to read them or you want to, you want to read them? So, uh, our system, it looks like uh, uh, a normal graphical uh, operating system. It has windows, it has, has a shell, it has uh, icons, all that stuff. Actually, the, the version we're running in Trinity looks exactly like Amiga OS. Actually, it looks kind of like Amiga OS 4. <laughs> but that's because that uh, keeps closest to the original Amiga OS 3XI. Um, we ask people, you know, uh, do you understand what this thing is? And uh, most people, they understand it in a different way. So, FriendUp is a computer that exists online, available to you everywhere you have an internet connection on any device. That is something it is for some people, because this is something, uh, something that some people really want. And this is delivered with FriendUp. Uh, on the other hand, it's also a calm surface, hiding the chaotic, ever-changing systems operating underneath, using abstraction. So it gives you a single point to focus on, while the rest is moving underneath. This is the client-server separation. So uh, that's how that's working out. It's multiple multitasking environments working as one. You might think that one system that's multitasking is moving stuff around and might get out of sync with another system that's running like that. So our system is managing all the moving bits. 
It's a way to minimize the risk of losing your apps, processes, and files by using computers in a cluster that share the state of your environment in redundancy. So each core can replicate the state of the other core, which also stores the state of the desktop environment, which is happening on the client. So the main thing is when one system might go down, you have everything in the same state on another system. So you always have access to your state. Or when you go from home and you go to the hotel on the smart TV, you take the USB keyboard and mouse and you just continue in your state. A place where you can give friends, co-workers and business clients temporary access to a fully working test environment. For developers out there, shader toy, JS fiddle on steroids, or just a templated environment instance. So the thing is that you can set up templates and you just give people web addresses. For example, tinyurl, you know, type tinyurl to some complete desktop environment that some people can just work on. Imagine uh, doing this at schools. You just set up an environment and they can just start working. Or you can say, let's you know, try some Indian developer, give them every tool they need and just give them a URL and they start working. A manifestation of your personal world with unlimited potential, a place where you can dream, work, play and live. The internet is a space that's been created that is limitless. It's a, it's a fantastic invention and we're finding new uses for it every day. I, I sometimes kid that it has the same inflation as the universe, it just keeps it, uh, growing. And uh, our, um, our system is a type of uh, reflection. Of, of that, that you can understand and use and control. Okay, tomorrow we're doing a one hour deep dive. Uh, hold on, don't leave it. Okay. okay. Yeah, but um, do you have any questions so far? I'm sure you have a lot of questions. Where, where do we begin? Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> okay, um, do you want to? I think this is better. Yeah, so I, I guess the question that I have is, like, you talk about unifying several different systems, like for instance, I have a Mac, I have a PC that's running Windows, um, like I have like a tablet, a phone. Is this something where like I migrate like the state of all those things like up into the cloud and you run instances of them for me, and so like I can like using front up, I can get to all the stuff from my Windows and my Mac environment, or is it something more like you're giving me an operating system in the cloud that no matter what device I'm on, I can get to that OS and there's like resources, there's applications. I, I, I think that's the fundamental question that I have about it. I would, say, I would actually say it's both. Okay, um, so basically what we made is um, a desktop environment with file systems and everything like that. So as you can see, this, this is quite like Amiga OS. You can skin it, of course. We're working on a Mac and a uh, Windows skin. Uh, everything you said is what we're trying to provide. Through uh, RDP, uh, we can actually stream singular applications in our windowing, in our, uh, windowing uh, window manager. And uh, we can, through uh, implementing, have you used daemon tools to mount ISO files as uh, file systems in Windows? Where else? Yeah. All our file systems will be available at, uh, through Samba and WebDAV. And you're going to be able to access the file systems on the uh, friend OS in your Windows applications, in your Mac applications. So when you stream them using RDP, it will be integrated. Our system in, uh, makes everything into uh, disks, websites, social networks. It becomes folders and files and executables. And you can then open your website in Microsoft Word, save to it, through our virtual file systems. So it will do all that and more.
what sort of uh, performance and latency. Um, our system is uh, asynchronous as the nature of, uh, of uh, JavaScript, but we're also using WebSockets. Thing is that uh, when you need something that's uh, low on latency, you're using the server and you're using the server-to-server -server, uh, functionality. This is just the face of it. You can of course stream stuff uh, if you need pixels. You can stream HTML5 video and track the input-output clicks and everything back to the server where stuff is really happening. But you can set up exactly what uh, type of system you want behind the scenes. The main point here is that we're not doing the job of Windows or Linux. They become drivers for us. So they do what they do best when it comes to late. I talked to one guy who said, no, no, I wouldn't use Windows for, for uh, serial, uh, low latency serial uh, input up. I wouldn't use Mac. I would use, and then he came with a, you know, Amiga type system, right? The point is that you use the best tool for the job, and then this is the face of it. This is your control center. So latency won't become a problem for you. More questions? Are you saving them for tomorrow? Is that it? <laughs> it's a lot to take in, I agree. Yes. Simple. I think from your system diagram that this is for applying applications and driving your Yes. The question was if this was supervising uh, the system or managing the system like an operating system, right? And it's not. That's not the point at all. That's why we call it a meta OS. It's one level over that. It's between all the systems. And it, di it, it directs them by proxy. So it says to the Windows system, do this and do that. It says to the Linux system, do this and do that. And it gives you all their capabilities on one screen. So you're basically being a conductor in an orchestra. And you're every every uh, musician is a different operating system or device. And you're using all that in one, uh, one screen on any device because our system is responsive. So when you use it on a mobile phone, you know, the window becomes tabs and uh, the dock become a menu, a slide up menu. So, and, and the, the two columned uh, uh, graphical user interface breaks around and becomes one column. So it adapts to your device, but you get the same functionality and you get the same power controlling all your other devices that are connected in the mesh. How it compares to universal plug and play? No, the, 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 the question you're asking is if, if uh, you could uh, do the same type of uh, auto configuring of, of uh, devices through. I don't know. The, the, the point here is uh, uh, um, that uh, actually you're, you're script, scripting all these devices to do certain things and they do it natively. You get the result. That's the point. The point is not the compatibility per se. We're running on top of, um, of um, uh, the web engine and the web engine does all the compatibility stuff for us. If you would use, if you'd use this on a terminal, you would SSH into our core, and then you would use it using our DOS environment. Uh, but uh, for the uh, device neutral things, we're using HTML5 to do this for us. Okay, I see people coming in there. Uh, any final questions? Of course,